Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester. As a part of this tutorial, we are still in the chapter 2 where we are talking about the standards. And in that case, we do have the very first topic as Automotive Spice. And the second part of it is the 2.1.2 requirements of the standard. This tutorial is the third part of this particular segment in order to understand everything in more detail. So if in case you have missed the first two parts in looking into the third part, I would request you to go through the part one and part two of this topic in order to start with the part three. As a part of this section, we will be understanding what is verification strategy and criteria for unit verifications. So just like any other process, we do have certain strategies which are created specifically for the unit verifications. And this verification strategy will guide you that how exactly unit verifications must take place. What are the activities to be conducted, the preparatory and prerequisite data you need to have. In fact, a lot of techniques which you can combine in order to work together with the developer in order to coordinate and fulfill the needs of the unit verification. Thus, it is important for the automobile industry to follow some of the standards in order to make sure that the unit verification is also up to the mark. So for the verification of the software units, we do have a software engineer standard.4. A SPICE requires a verification strategy. In the case of SWE5, SWE6, SYS4, SIS5, test specific process a SPICE requires a test strategy that we have covered in the previous chapter. Uh, the test strategy only looks at the dynamic test, which is from the point of overall dynamic executions. This is an addition to the verification strategy, which also considers the code review and static analysis. So over your overall test strategy, which is from the point of the dynamic testing and dynamic uh, executions of your test cases, we may also have certain uh, internal strategies specific to each level. And that's where we are talking about the unit verification, which plays a vital role. The tester here verifies the compliance with the software detail design and with the functional and non-functional requirements according to the verification strategy. The strategy defines how the tester provides the evidence. Therefore, the tester can use different combination of static and dynamic test techniques to verify the units which is generally from the point of that there are a lot of such factors which are verified much earlier in the life cycle and right from the moment the units are being prepared. Thus, it is really important to be taken care that we have certain details which need to be captured and stored in form of results to justify that how exactly your unit was behaving and whether it is meeting from the point of the design and architecture. If a developer changes a unit, the tester must also evaluate this change. Now, from the foundation and as well as from the Agile certifications, we do already know that what is continuous integration or at any point of time we talk about the change related testing. So if there are any changes involved, if a unit is modified due to some reason, it could be due to a defect, it could be due to an update or any kind of modification which might be required to improvise the functionality, then the regression comes into picture. And regressions must cover all the test cases which you generally perform as a part of the testing. But yes, of course, same way just like uh, traditional approaches and other conventional testing methods, we can make use of the impact analysis to guide you with the regression test. So yes, you can make sure that you are performing certain test cases as a part of this process. Additionally, uh, there are certain standards which require the development of the criteria for verifications of unit. So what kind of criteria development can be used here? So these criteria basically define what needs to be fulfilled. Like what exactly we need to do. So just like acceptance criteria or maybe the entry criteria and acceptance acceptance. Uh, exit criteria, you can make use of these criteria to determine that what exactly will be verified as a part of the units. Therefore, a tester can evaluate how much the unit fulfills the functional or non-functional requirements and matches the detailed design. The following criteria are possible criteria for the verification of units. And you can have a quick look on these examples to understand better that what could be the criteria options are. For example, unit test cases, including the test data. How many unit test cases have you created, whether it is as per the design architecture or not? Objectives for the test coverage, 
for example, decision coverage, statement coverage, cyclomatic complexity, and so on. Two supported static analysis, which assess the compliance with the uh, coding standards. So these static analysis with help of the code can help you to measure the compliance of the coding standard as well. Code reviews for a unit or parts of the unit, which cannot be assessed by the tool-supported static analysis. Obviously, tool-supported static analysis is not 100% possible to check the coding standards. Thus, there are the areas, uh, the areas which you cannot cover with the tool. It requires a manual effort. According to Automotive Spies, the documentation of the verification strategy is part of the test plan on unit level. So now you know where exactly it is important. So sometime you can be asked with a question directly from this statement that according to Automotive Spies, when exactly do you expect the verification strategy to be determined? And then the answer must be the test plan of the unit level. Further, right, the next we have the traceability in Automotive Spies. Just like your conventional applications and the traditional approaches we do have the traceability done at every point and it's very crucial to make sure that everything is related to each other so as in ctfl that is foundation syllabus we have discussed a spice also requires by directional traceability this allows the tester to analyze the impact which you definitely know from your regression suites or maintenance testing that impact analysis is very helpful to evaluate coverage or to track status Coverage is obviously measured with help of the traceability that how many uh, test cases are prepared for any particular requirement and the track status of course in terms of that how much completeness we have achieved by making sure that what number of test cases are executed so far. So moreover this allows the testers to ensure the consistency between the linked element textually as well as semantically. So you have both the ways you can measure that how well you have gone. And bidirectional traceability plays a vital role because it can be evaluated from both the ways. For example, if you have traced, uh, traced your requirements with the test cases, that means you have linked your old requirements with the different test cases, you can measure it as whether the old requirements are converted into test cases or all my test cases are covering all the requirements. So this is what is bidirectional traceability. ASPICE differentiates between vertical and horizontal traceability. So, the bidirectionally is further broken in detail from the point of vertical and horizontal, where vertical means ASPICE requires stakeholder requirements to be linked to the software components. In doing so, the link over all levels of the development ensures a consistency between the related work products. Whereas horizontally, ASPICE also requires traceability and consistency in case between the work results of the development and the corresponding test specifications and results. So yes, there are possible ways to do the same thing and uh, the necessity is to make sure that either way we just have everything covered and measurable so that it helps you to make sure that everything is up to date. In addition, the basic practice SUP 10 that is uh, support process BP8 requires by additional traceability between change request and the work products affected by the change request. Of course, it becomes very important that traceability is just not limited to the work products and the test bases which are already created. If there is any modification done and there is a revision on any particular entity, then this revision should also be equally mapped with the work products. That shows if your test cases are well enough to still support that particular change or you need to write something more in order to cover that requirement. So that's another thing which need to be taken care. Change request is generally initiated by a problem. Bidirectional traceability is required between change request and the corresponding problem report. So this will give you 100% coverage in terms of making sure that everything what you're doing is covering the parent requirements and making sure that you're not missing out something important. All right, so that's completes your the last topic of the chapter one, uh, chapter two, first topic is spice. Uh, the next one we will be getting into another topic which is autosar. So stay tuned for that. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to answer your queries and address them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.